time to upgrade the pumps. So, getting close to the end of a single 525, need to go up. Where to go from here? There's a couple different routes I could have taken. I could have sumped a third gen tank. I could have gotten the fourth gen tank, gotten a big external. Could have done some combination of all the above. Ended up going with the fourth gen tank and triple 525s in the tank. I got, you know, we all got our own reasons. But this one mostly came up to what parts presented themselves first. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I made a post about this earlier, but I picked up a fourth gen tank from Rock Auto. I got the filler neck. I then measured the OD of the filler neck. And on the tank, came up with a part from O'Reilly's for fuel ne filler neck that matches both of those. I'll just trim it to size. Once it comes time to it, the only thing left was the sunning unit. Just cruising Facebook, saw a post on F Body Empire or whatever the f that page is. Triple in tank 525 pump setup. So I got three service kits. It had the filter and the PTFE hose. I had the wire and some other stuff, but I didn't touch the wire. Just the hoses and the filters. And then this did not have the return was all the way up here at there and just ended and then the fuel waterfall down into the tank the waterfall and fuel causes aeration so i picked up a 3 8 mpt to dash 10 fitting and this is actually air conditioning hose to whatever you call it but it's 10 an and then i it was 12 inches long and i cut it and i did that by measuring from the level here down was 10 inches so i put my square here measured up nine so there should be one inch between the bottom of this and the bottom of the tank but the things that kill pumps aeration bad wiring and restriction restriction both on the pressure side and on the vent side so on tank in here i have dash eight feed and it has a half inch which is the same thing rubber line into a filter we're gonna do the same thing on here this has got dash 10 so it'll have five eighths into a filter the reason why that's important is if you paid attention in science class you can boil water at room temperature by drawing a vacuum on it the same will happen with fuel inside the tank some guys will tell you they prefer a big single over multiple smaller pumps in tank i see the value of both the the concern with the multiple single tank smaller pumps is that if one goes bad you know you you risk not having enough fuel flow and burning up the motor that is where holly comes and saves us from ourselves and with the fuel pressure sensor any loss of fuel pressure i have it set to cut ignition so we lose a pump boom drop it out the benefit of having multiple smaller pumps in tank is that if if one goes bad and this is a drag and drive car and fuel pumps do go bad so if i lose a pump i can just rewire and drive on one of my alternates instead of my primary it's not a big deal if one goes bad that's a 10 minute fix if that i can they're a stock hellcat pump so if one goes bad i'll just have one overnighted to the next closest uh, o'reilly AutoZone, whatever the case if they don't already have one in stock okay enough about pumps let's continue on to this adventure right as you can see sending unit dropped right in dropped right in there was a bit of finagling getting three pumps and the, the floater in there but it wasn't the end of the world anyways next step i suppose get the steel tank out of here put the plastic tank in and then hook it up you can see the mark on the sending unit the resistance of the the float level from all the way down to all the way up, and it's 40 to 250 ohms. So then we can set that in our ProDash when it comes time for it. Right, so the next step in this was to make a, a new relay panel. The pumps and all that came with a wiring harness, so I wasn't that thrilled about it. I got this fuse block and the um, ground junction block from Summit, and then the relays came from, and the aluminum panel came from Amazon. It's all 30 amp relays and all that stuff, each circuit, blah, blah. blah. So just a quick description on this. 12 volt to come here, straight off of, straight off the cutoff switch. And then ground is gonna go to the ground lug that's underneath the body of the car, which goes directly to the battery. And then white goes to the computers. I've got primary pump on one, and then the two additional pumps on another pin. And then I've got one that is a spare, and then blue goes to each pump. So wiring is pretty simple. Right, so where do we leave off? Tank, we gotta get that out of the car. So jack this up as high as you can. Let it hang until 
like you see right sha brake line hanging and you got the rear end hanging down this would be slightly easier with a 10 bolt if you're slow and still have one of them 12 bolt 9 inch 60 whatever the case you have if you have an 8.8 .8, uh i'm sorry you're retarded anyway you may need to get a little bit more room as the whole housing takes up more physical space than the 10 bolt anyways jack this up as high as it'll go drop the exhaust if you're still slow and have you know exhaust that doesn't go out your fender then disconnect most of your suspension you'll see i got that pan hard bar support there down pan hard bar is hanging off of the little mount i got the shocks out i don't know if you can see that but they're dangling dangling about four inches and the passenger's side spring had to come out if you're stock you're not going to have you know some nice dash eight and dash six hoses but from the top of here disconnect them if you got trap door which is brilliant mod makes it so you can do that before even dropping this anyways power and ground for the sending unit power and ground for the for the pump disconnect that if you're stock you'll have a little three clip deal that attaches to that anyways tank is out next plastic tank goes in right so this filler neck that we got from rock auto and this filler neck hose whatever we got from uh, o'reilly i just slide this in about an inch or so and then this end just goes right on the end of the tank And then, y'all can kind of see down there, but you just go in slide that guy in the end, give it a little twist until it generally lines up, take this guy. And there. Bingo, bango, Dodge Durango, filler neck, done. Just like that, gooder than a goddamn. We'll put the fuel door on in a minute. Go underneath the car and we'll tighten up that, uh, tighten up that old hose clamp on the end of the tank. Here's another one that we did the other day. We got connector for the single primary pump and the dual secondary pumps, 10 gauge wire. And then here we got the two wires for the sending unit, the level, right? 40 to 230, 250 ohms, something like that. This one, I cut the end of that connector off and then down there, hold on. All right, cut what was left of the original three wire harness, right? We had power, ground, and sensor. Cut that, loomed it, ran it up here, spliced them two together, and then loomed this, braided it, so we got six 10 gauge wires in here. Three power, three ground, goes down there. The level sub harness and the power and ground for the pump sub harness. Follows along subframe rail. And then I popped out this here factory drain plug thing and put a grommet that Motion had on sale. And then ran pump, power and ground into there, into that relay board y'all saw earlier so there we go that's it that's the wiring one last thing about the wiring before we move on it's the fuel level sensor so okay so that two wire sub harness that i made going from the on the fuel level sensor on the fuel ascending unit one side of that is going to go to io7 and one of them is going to go to sensor ground so pin 21 and pin 26 on the pro dash and that will get your fuel level sensor reading correctly if you have questions on the fuel level sensor i have another video just for that up here in the corner right now for the vents we have a half inch barb here and two three eighths ports or barbs whatever you call it want to call it here so what i'm going to do on this tank is similar to what i did on the third gen tank except because i have much more pump and bigger lines the vents are going to need to be bigger so i'll be reusing this vent from the third gen tank. These are both 3 8 lines. So that'll take care of that. And then I picked up half inch hose and another filter and a half inch and half inch barb fitting. Here's a filter. It's nothing special, just came off the shelf from the performance aisle at AutoZone. 
The reason this is important, as the fuel lowers, as you're burning fuel and pumping it throughout the system, air is going to be replacing it. It's going to be what's underneath your car as you're driving. It tends to be gross. Ever go on the bottom of that and what, just imagine all the nastiness that's underneath your own car? How do you think it got there? That air is going to be going into the tank via the vent unless you put some kind of filter on there. So, this is going to be real simple. There we go. We're done on a bench. If you can put male parts into female parts, you can get this done. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, there we go. Just like that, we have the two three-eighths slot ports vented and filtered and the half inch vented. 40 to 250 ohm sending unit. I've already reprogrammed ProDash. I'll show you how to do that. Tank's mounted. It's filled. It's vented. The only thing left is to run our 10 feed and 8 return. Okay, so like I was saying, got to update the dash for the different sending unit going from the 3rd gen tank to the 4th gen tank. So we'll go to menu, configuration, dash configuration, scroll down to IO7 fuel level. And we're going to change that custom ohms. We'll clear that out. Actually, not cleared out. We're just going to put a four in the front of it. So now we got 40 ohms at the top, value of zero. Go over here to where it says 90 ohms. Clear that. We're going to enter in our highest number from when we tested this on the dash on the multimeter, which was 250 ohms. Hit OK. We are then going to linearize X, linearize Y. Save it, hit OK, hit OK, go back to our dash. And you'll see the level go from 100 down to about 60, which is about correct for having 10 gallons of gas in one of these tanks. They hold about 15. So two thirds is pretty close to right. Right, so the last thing to talk about is the plumbing. So my feed line is dash 10, just like before it comes out of the subframe into, now it goes into the flex fuel sensor before I had that on the re regulator in the return line. Out of flex fuel sensor with the Motion Race Works flex fuel sensor mount into each rail. So from dash 10 to dash into two dash sixes into each rail, out of each rail, into the fuel pressure regulator, just as before. And then, now a dash eight, into the subframe and back underneath the car. Routing it this way does a couple things. It keeps all the fuel lines out of the tunnel and away from the spinning drive shaft. That is important for a few reasons, but mostly, it will not pass an NHRA safety inspection because, well, it says it right in the rules, can't have fuel lines in the transmission tunnel. But if you break a, you joint. You now have cut your brake line, or you have now cut your fuel lines, and you now have flammable fuel all over the bottom of the car, bottom of the track, blah, blah, blah. You're asking for a fire. Just as before, feed and return both come out of the front of the subframe through that oval-shaped hole, and then come, they run along the subframe connector. Okay, so, while we're talking about plumbing, the dash 10 feed comes out of the tank, out of the sending unit and into the big motion, single in, single out, 10 micron fuel fitting, and then goes up to the front of the car. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much it. We talked about the tank, we talked about the pumps, talked about the wiring, talked about the sensor, the level fuel level sensor on the Pro Dash. We talked about the, ho the plumbing with the hoses. I even showed y'all the complete breakdown of all the fittings and hoses that I used with the little, you know, artistic dot drawing. So anything y'all need, y'all should be able to get right off of all that stuff from this video. Anyways, wasn't a hard project, just took some time. Like, share, comment, subscribe, shirts, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's a calendar, there's a hoodie, you know, that, this, that, and the third. It's all down in the store. Check it out. Do the Instagram thing. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good day.